Don Don is a purely crazy manga, guys. It's very funny, action-packed, and just plain entertaining. It was a manga that was released April 6th of last year, so you're probably thinking to yourselves, well, there's probably less than 20 chapters out by now, right? Well, actually it comes out on a weekly basis, so there's already 74 chapters to binge on the internet. Or, better yet, you can watch this video timeline, and you can have the whole thing quote-unquote read in about 30 minutes. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the action-packed Don to Don. But before that, I got a quick ad about some anime merchandise, with a link in the description. breaks up with her boyfriend after he demanded her to lend him some money. She then comes to the aid of a boy who is getting picked on by his classmates. Ken, the boy with the glasses, believes the US and Japanese governments are preparing for interstellar war. Though Momo doesn't believe in aliens, she does believe in ghosts. To which Ken thinks this is ridiculous. The two then arrive at each other's designated areas to prove each other wrong. Momo believes in ghosts because her grandma was a medium. Ken then runs into an elderly spirit whom says, I'll let you suckle my titties if I could suck your dick. Ken rides away on his bike as the turbo granny and runs with great speed. Momo is then stripped by three men who come from the planet Serpo. They come from an all-male planet and wish to have sex with Momo. The turbo granny emerges from the phone and proceeds to bite on the crotch of one of the Serpo men. I got cursed by the turbo granny! One of the Serpos overstimulates Momo's brain, releasing her psychic energy. I can kick these scumbags seven ways to Sunday! Though turbo granny leaves Ken's body, because she has his dick, the curse won't leave him. Having now gone through this situation, Momo believes in UFOs, and Ken believes in ghosts. Momo is shocked to find out that Ken's name is the same name of the idol that she has a crush on. Ken walks through the gate to Momo's house, but he starts on fire. Inside, the curse kicks in again as Ken catches Momo changing. The doorbell for the evil spirits rings. The two go outside and are confronted by the floor woods monster. Momo suppresses the curse in Ken's head as he releases it in his body. Unfortunately, he can't keep up with the curse's power and reverts to his human form. The two deal a significant blow, but the monster smashes Momo into a wall. Momo allows herself to get smacked so he can play a seal on the archway, incinerating the monster. Momo passes out as Ken transforms once more. Ken grabs onto Momo, but the grandmother steps in and incinerates his body. Ken quickly finds himself trapped in a barrier that the grandmother drew on the ground. Sometime later, Momo finds Ken, i.e. Okarun, back to his normal self. The grandmother places him in the shrine so the curse won't work. Momo's grandmother says that Turbo Granny has fused with the earthbound spirit. The two will need to beat the Turbo Granny in a game of tag and draw her out of the spirit's territory to beat her. The two will thusly need to train and build up their stamina. When Momo squeezes on the Okarun's aura, it gets smaller and controls the curse. Okarun then needs to take a crap. But Momo and her grandmother try to stop him, because if he's left alone, the Turbo Granny will be unleashed. Momo then suppresses the curse in Ken, well, he's on the toilet. Despite this, the Turbo Granny is seen in the bathroom, and tells Momo to come to the tunnel tonight. Before they head out, the grandmother gives the two protective clothing. The two enter the tunnel and encounter the large Turbo Granny. Momo propels flaming baseball bats at her, but she consumes them with her eyes. Okarun's dick is returned, so the curse's power wears off. Momo then proposes a game of tag, to which Turbo Granny agrees to. Momo is captured with multiple arms, as Turbo Granny begins counting once more. Okarun then sucks on her titties. The granny possesses Okarun as Momo grabs onto her spirit and seals her away. The earthbound spirit then attacks them. The two proceed to run away in fear from the crab-like spirit. Okarun activates the turbo granny and uses his legs like a helicopter to escape. They lead the crab to the bathhouse and the warm water causes it to tense up. Okarun transforms as they run away from a mob of possessed humans and the crab. Unfortunately, the turbo granny escaped while this happened. She fuses with the crab as Momo grabs onto the train 
with her psychic abilities. The train goes outside Turbo Granny's boundaries, setting off the trap that Momo's grandmother laid. Turns out the tunnel was a site for multiple murders of young women, and Turbo Granny came to console their spirits. The three have dinner at Momo's grandmother's house, as Okarun eventually takes his leave. At school, the two wish to talk to each other about ghosts and aliens. After looking for each other at school, they eventually bump into each other and accidentally kiss. <laughs> The two act like they hate each other as Okarun finds out that his balls are now missing. My dick fell off! Momo, I have something to tell you, says Okarun. Momo is too embarrassed by him as Okarun runs into a mysterious female. She sort of plays with his emotions for a bit and this pisses off Momo, so she makes a tub fall onto her head. <laughs> Momo and Okarun walk home as the latter reveals that he lost his balls. Momo and her grandmother perform an exorcism on Okarun as a cat doll suddenly comes to life. Turns out that she's the Turbo Granny and if she dies, Okarun will never get his balls back. Okarun transforms as Momo's grandmother says that only Turbo Granny's consciousness went into the cat doll. Momo strikes a deal with Turbo Granny to return Okarun's balls, but unfortunately, she doesn't have them. Later on, Okarun gets pissed at a boy who claims that Momo does it with anyone. Okarun then realizes how beautiful Momo is and tries to run away from her. It turns out that Ira spread the rumor about Momo, and she thinks that she's some kind of demon. She then pulls out a golden ball, believing it to be her destiny to save the world. Turbo Granny explains that whomever finds the ball might awaken spiritual powers. Ira's friends then capture Momo and pin her to the ground. Perish, demon! Who sent your only son into the world? Momo removes Ira's friends and state that Ira is holding Okarun's balls. Okarun runs towards them as a mysterious woman grabs onto Ira. Here's mommy! Here's Jenny! Okarun transforms and attacks, but the woman easily dodges. The woman eats Okarun and demands Ira to call her mommy. Turbo Granny reveals that the woman is acrobatic Silky. Silky then consumes Ira in front of Momo. Silky captures Momo and instructs her to say mommy. Fuck you, responds Momo. Turbo Granny lights up Silky, forcing her to vomit up the three children. Silky approaches Ira, but finds out that her hair has become tangled in the building's beams, thanks to Okarun. I'm gonna fucking kill you all, screams Silky. I'm going to kill you, and then kill you again. Momo holds her down as Okarun performs the final blow. The three grab onto Okarun's ball and find out that Ira is dead. Turbo Granny says that a normal human being being eaten like that basically guarantees death. Silky offers to replace Ira's dwindling aura with her own. To prove that she won't eat Ira, she rips off her lower jaw. Momo uses her psychic arms like a cable to transfer the aura to Ira, allowing her to see all the past memories between the two. After her daughter was ripped away from her, Silky committed suicide by leaping off of a building. After seeing all this, Momo begins to cry. Ira is revived as Silky's body begins to disintegrate. I want to buy you cuter clothes. Ira clutches on the silky as the two say goodbye. You made me the happiest. The group of five then eats dinner together. Ira states that she was chosen to be the guardian of world peace as she takes her leave. Turbo's granny throws Okarun's ball back into his body. Stee Reich! Batter out! I've got one of my balls back! At school, Momo finds Okarun on top of Ira. Put your mom in the kitchen. Making blueberry muffins. Prior to this event, we see Ukurun training. I can no longer hide these feelings, says Ira. She then tries to kiss him as the boy falls on top of her. How fucking disgusting are you, says Momo. Later on, Momo gets pissed about what she saw. Just then, it gets dark outside. The other students are gone, and a sea monster is spotted by Momo. Water floods the floor as the sea monster destroys the classroom with a blast. Ira and Okarun are confronted by the crab-headed alien with boxing gloves. Okarun transforms, but it's turned off by psychokinesis. We meet again, male subject! The Serpo are here for his dick, no surprise, since it's very valuable. Before they could do so, however, Ira transforms into Acro Silky and fends him off. Are you superhuman too? I see. So this is why you were able to enter our void. Ira fights the monsters as Okarun flies through the classroom completely naked. Ira believes she's the chosen one, but she's taken out. The monsters implement the Awesome Zone to prevent the two from transforming. Okarun overcomes the Awesome Zone with the help of Momo. Okarun, you idiot! That is what you get for flirting with dumb skanks! Okarun and Ira fight the monsters together. Hold up! Don't fight so close to each other! You're an easier target that way! Oh my, jealous much? 
Bitch, you just jealous of my Super Saiyan swag. The aliens use the Awesome Zone to turn the two back to human. The three then plunge underneath the water. The three then notice a Loch Ness monster, i.e. Nessie, is swimming underneath them. Okarun then saves Ira from the monster. The two then decide to swim away. And I shit you not, this is the dialogue. First, I get a firm grip on you, Okarun. Then I squeeze you forward. I move you with my powers like a fish on the line. Then I ride on top. Oh, I'm alive! The two save Ira as Momo instructs her to take off her clothes. I mean, it just kind of feels like a porno at this point. The three then notice the amalgamated alien monster. Ira uses her hair to strangle the monster's neck. She's sent flying back as Momo and Okarun recover her. Momo then uses her psychic powers to lift him out of the water. She then pries his mouth open as Okarun uses Ira's hair to attack the monster and save Momo. After the incident, the two then discover that the other students are staring at their naked bodies, embarrassing them both. Afterwards, Okarun says they fought the yokai, and they are beings that protect the Earth from alien invasions. He speculates that the aliens were the one that stole his missing ball, in an effort of defeating the yokai. Okarun then explains the situation he had earlier with Ira, and how he was attempting to train. One of the girls speculates that the three were engaging in a nude gladiator combat. Again, you know, with the porno. <laughs> Outside, Momo and Ira are attacked by the crab man, but he collapses to the ground. They then take him to Momo's grandmother's house. He then vows to never harm anyone again. Turns out the man's son is sick, and he needs daily blood transfusions, otherwise he'll die. If you had my wiener, would it save your son? <laughs> Such innocence. Momo's grandmother discovers that milk is the blood of the Kappa monsters. They then give him a cow as he respectfully thanks them for their help. Momo then answers the door and finds Gigi there, who turns out to be her childhood friend and first love. Oh, Momo, you're such a sweetie. Okaroon, help me murder this dude? Turns out Gigi is now moving in with them. Okaroon says goodbye for the night as he clutches his chest, looking distressed. Gigi saw something weird in his house one day. Exorcists were called in, but three out of the five of them committed suicide. Momo's grandmother then instructs Momo to quote unquote go blow down that cursed house. Gigi embarrasses Momo at school the next day, so she puts him in a chokehold. Outside, Okaroon begins training harder than ever before. Gigi barges in and gives Momo a yogurt snack, making Okaroon quite jealous. A weird man then knocks Okaroon away as he goes for Momo. Okaroon, his ball! It's golden! Okaroon then transforms to catch up to the mysterious man. He then saves Momo and Gigi from being crushed by a bus. To escape Momo's psychokinesis, the man disassembles himself and merges back together. The group eventually catches up to him, however, as it's revealed that Momo grabbed his heart when he disassembled. Taro, the man, then finds a woman he loves in the trash. As long as Hana is taken care of, Taro will go back to being an anatomical model. Watching Gigi make Momo laugh makes Okarun jealous once more. The two men then display their level of chadliness to one another. At school, a group of students see Taro running through the halls. Sorry, Hana. I got hit by a truck and I got delayed by gathering up all my parts. Meanwhile, Gigi then wakes up from a nightmare after dreaming about a weird creature. On the bus to Gigi's house, Okarun continues to feel jealous when he sees the two laughing together. It turns out that Gigi considers Okarun to be a friend, but Okarun wishes that he was more unlikable. The three then arrive at Gigi's house. Unbeknownst to them, however, a group of villagers are staring at them from the forest. Momo decides to go to the hot springs, leaving Okarun and Gigi behind. The boys play soccer as Gigi asks Okarun if he's got a thing for Momo. The two finish up as Gigi smashes a wall that sounds hollow. Five mysterious women then enter the house. Five middle-aged men then walk into the bathhouse that Momo was in. They mention gators as they attempt to grab her. The bathhouse then comes crashing down, nearly missing Momo. Turns out Turbo Granny snuck into Momo's backpack and is here too. Turbo Granny then says that Gigi's house is soaked in human blood. Turns out these women are the landlords and are allowing Gigi to stay here for free while his parents are sick. Momo arrives at a shrine and finds out the people used to worship a great snake. It turns out there was an offering over 200 years ago, and ever since then, there haven't been any volcanic eruptions. Momo then returns to the house. At last, all of our offerings are present. Momo kicks one of the men in the neck. Unfortunately for her, she's at a numbers disadvantage. She's knocked through a wall. <laughs> Turns out that they are the Keto family, and they have been making sacrifices for the last 200 years. The floor turns into sand as Momo attempts to escape. Okarun and Gigi use tables to knock the Keto family down, and save Momo in the process. 
They all fall down a shaft as Gigi lands on a gigantic serpent. Turns out it's a Mongolian death worm, and a massive one at that. Okarun and Momo attempt to kill themselves, due to the fact that the worm is commanding them to do so through psychic waves. Glass cuts Gigi's eye, as the others are in trouble. Gigi grabs everyone and escapes from the house. The man from Gigi's dream arrives, and gives the worm the evil gaze that drives people to suicide. Okarun then chops the worm's head clean off. The mysterious man's past is revealed. As a boy, he was sacrificed to the great volcano. He then turned into a ghost, with the ability to drive people to suicide. In the now, Gigi realizes that this man is not a bad guy. Gigi finds the boy's real body. The worm shocks him with an electrical discharge. Gigi promises to play with the boy, as a strange spirit possesses his body. Gigi then crushes the snake with a powerful punch. At long last, it's mine. This body, and with it, I will kill all humans. Gigi proceeds to kick Momo with a swift kick. Gigi creates a ball of spirits and kicks it straight through the worm. The worm then runs away into the dirt. Gigi then turns his attention to Momo once more. Luckily, Okarun intervenes on her behalf. After a brief scuffle, Okarun takes Momo and runs away. Okarun wants Momo to escape as he handles Gigi. Omo then launches Momo towards the opening, allowing her to escape. You should be pleased. You'll be the first one to die. Momo attempts to help Okarun escape but the gap is too large. Momo then lights the house on fire. Skip it up and down. Hold on, Okarun. I'm gonna rescue you. Meanwhile, Okarun and Gigi trade blows with one another. Gigi then traps Okarun in the cursed house. I'm home. Gigi takes the early advantage, but Okarun becomes enraged and beats him to a pulp. Gigi is knocked out as Okarun collapses from exhaustion. Meanwhile, the firefighters arrive at the house to put out the fire. Out of the fire comes a gigantic worm. Because sunlight is its weakness, it begins to burn to death. My eyes! To save itself, it takes cover behind the house. Enraged, Momo chucks a fire truck through the house and into the worm. After dying, the worm spits out the Keto family. Because the serpent is dead, the great volcano erupts. Momo fills the worm with water and uses it to douse out the lava. The worm's phlegm puts out the fire, but the forest fires still pose a danger. The Keto family attacks Momo, but the priest from earlier comes in to protect her. Gigi then enters the scene in a chaotic fury. Momo then teams up with the priest and the old lady to take down Gigi. The three struggle, but then the Kappa alien comes in with a flurry of punches. Momo's grandmother then descends from the ship on top of Taro. And through their collective efforts, they're able to capture Gigi. I didn't know this is what you needed me for. What do I do about my organs? Put them in a grocery bag or something. Momo looks for Okarun in the giant pit, but it's filled up with magma. They then pull him out with the spaceship and determine that he's still okay. Turns out he protected himself by using the Mongolian deathworm's phlegm. Momo then hugs Okarun. Thank goodness you're alive. Boner alert. We then see an enraged Gigi sealed within Taro. While eating, Gigi's normal, silly persona returns. Turns out if he splashed with cold water, his evil eye comes out. But if it's hot water, he's Gigi. Turbo Granny explains that the evil eye was originally a mountain yokai, and they're revered as gods. Normal people would lose their minds if they were possessed by one, but Gigi has a high spiritual energy, making him the ultimate vessel. Unfortunately, it will only get stronger from here, and will eventually become unstoppable. They are all given hot water thermoses to splash Gigi with if the need arises. The Kappa alien then reveals that his name is Peeny Weenie. Bruh. Momo begins to play with Okarun's hand, but he doesn't understand what's going on. Gigi then visits his parents in the hospital, making him overjoyed. The news reports that the Keto family were arrested for their involvement in various murders. But Naki, the ringleader, is currently on the run. In the forest, we see Naki transform out of her human skin into a subterranean monster. At school, Momo invites Ira and Okarun to stay with her, since it'll be easier to control Gigi if he becomes Evil Eye. Though reluctant at first, the two agree. At home, Taro comes off of Gigi, and Momo's grandmother tells him that he's only allowed to use hot water from now on. While all of them are eating at the dinner table, a drop of soy sauce gets on Gigi, transforming him into Evil Eye. After getting splashed with warm water, Gigi apologizes profusely. The Hayashi performers then arrive at the house to put on a concert. Turns out that they're here to help out with the exorcism. Disrespect your surroundings! Momo restrains Gigi as he says, 
Don't kill the evil eye! I promised him we'd play together! Gigi begs for them not to kill the boy, so Momo's grandmother uses a fire extinguisher and calls off the exorcism. Okarun and Momo take it upon themselves to watch over Gigi from now on. It then starts to rain, transforming Gigi into Evil Eye once more. Later on, Gigi undergoes training to control the Evil Eye. Okarun takes his responsibilities of watching Gigi very seriously, even following him to the bathroom. Momo then decides to get a part-time job to help fix up the house. Momo's friends then escort Okarun to get some tea, and as it turns out, it's from the restaurant that Momo's working at. Give it to me, I'm worth it. Welcome to our establishment, you sack of shit, says Momo. To make their tea tastier, they all use the Moe Moe Tri-Beam. You bastards, you'll regret this, damn you. After Momo's shift, Okarun returns to walk her home. Momo then grabs onto his hand because it's quote-unquote cold. At home, Momo's grandmother wants to test Gigi by pouring some soy sauce on him. Turns out he's able to suppress the evil eye for room temperature liquids, but cold ones are still off limits. Okarun and Momo return home as Gigi bumps into Ira and gets some liquid on him, turning him into Evil Eye. He then creates a barrier to prevent the others from interfering as he looks to punch Momo. Momo attempts to restrain Gigi, but he begins to choke her. She spits the water in his face as he returns to normal. Okarun visits a farm and finds Mr. Penny, disguised as a human. Okarun wants to be his disciple, but Mr. Penny refuses. Okarun begins his own training as Turbo Granny offers to make him stronger. Ira barges in, saying she wants to get stronger too. Turbo Granny explains how Okarun's moves are too monotonous, and how he needs to become faster. Just then, numerous famous musicians are summoned to attack Okarun and Ira. Their musical notes are bombs, says Okarun. Symphony number six, pastoral. Take this. Oh, it was gorgeousness and gorgeousity made flesh, screams Beethoven. They transfer to a rice paddy field as they begin dodging the musical notes. Ira gets trapped, but Okarun manages to grab her as they dodge the blast. The two then follow the beats of the rock music group that performs exorcisms. Oh me, oh my, it's dance party time, says Ira. The various musicians fight back under Beethoven's command. Just then, a horde of opera singers begin to rush them. Ira uses her hair to get them away from the horde. Through her various aerial maneuvers, Ira makes the musicians attack each other. Just then, Okarun performs five notes in one beat to defeat the legendary musicians. Afterwards, the three are transported back to the music room. Manjiro then informs Gigi that they'll perform the exorcism tomorrow. Okarun returns, wanting to challenge Evil Eye to a battle. I'm going to beat the Evil Eye to a pulp. Ira tosses water on Gigi as he transforms and attacks Okarun. The two exchange blows, with Okarun seizing the advantage. He then goes all out and knocks Evil Eye into the house. Come on, more! Let's do more! I've never had so much fun! Okarun refuses to fight on, stating he doesn't want to bully Evil Eye any longer. That's because he believes he's much stronger than Evil Eye at this point. From now on, Okarun agrees to become Evil Eye's playmate, and to fight him once a week on Tuesdays. Evil Eye then hands over his underwear to Okarun. I'll let you hold on to these until I murder ya. Evil Eye then transforms back into Gigi, without his underwear, mind you. Nice willy! Yells Psycho. Gigi's parents then come to pick him up. With her house being destroyed, Psycho, Momo, and Turbo Granny go to the super bathhouse. Later on, Psycho and Momo kick a strange robot. Turns out this robot is called Mr. Ludris, and he's a specialist in construction. Peeny Weenie explains that they'll use Nanoscan to remake Psycho's house. The group then gets busy rebuilding the house. Le Grill! What the hell is that? Gigi's family comes back to rebuild Psycho's house, but to their surprise, they see it's already done. Gigi takes a walk with Momo and takes a sip of liquid that transforms him into Evil Eye. However, because of his vow to Okarun, he doesn't hurt anyone. Later on in class, Evil Eye says, I want to murder him. Humans, all of them. Urge to kill. Fading. Fading. Rising. Momo then finds out about the apartment block Spectre from one of her friends, which looks like a golden ball. A classmate of Okarun then asks how he's so attractive to the beautiful ladies. Momo then pulls Okarun out of the classroom so that they can locate his golden ball. Lurking behind them is the boy from the classroom. The pervy boy's body launches towards Momo, but Okarun moves her out of the way. Okarun goes for the golden ball, but it appears that there's somebody there that cannot be seen. Okarun chases after the ball, with Momo on his back. 
back. The invisible figure then attacks Okarun. Momo uses her psychic arms to chase him down, but they're repelled back. The pervy boy is then knocked off of the building, so Momo is forced to save him. Momo then catches a reflection of the figure and grasps onto him with her powers. Okarun then launches a ferocious attack on the unknown being. They are then surprised to find out that the invisible creature is a kaiju. After a brief moment, the kaiju grows to a massive size and smashes into the building. Yeah! The three run away from the kaiju as they see Ira and Gigi on the street. Gigi takes the pervert away as Okarun, Momo, and Ira prepare for battle. Just then, the kaiju throws a devastating punch at Ira. Gigi barely holds back his evil eye, but the sweat from Sakata, the pervy boy, makes him transform. What's with you? You want to get murdered? Ira lies unconscious as Okarun enters the fray. Okarun saves Ira before she gets crushed, but he turns back into himself while in midair. Momo saves the two before they get crushed. Okarun checks in on Ira, but it turns out she was just faking her unconsciousness so that the boy would hold her. Okarun then claims that he'll be able to beat the kaiju with the nanoskins. With their imaginations, they're able to reshape the house into a giant Buddha. Sakata thusly names the being the great Kinta Bodhisattva Zeta version. Do we even know how to get this thing to move? The kaiju launches itself and kicks the Buddha right in the face. It proceeds to beat down the Buddha with great ease and efficiency. Evil Eye wants to use this opportunity to kill Okarun, but Okarun says it's not the time for that. Before another stomp takes place, the Buddha statue blocks it with its hand. Turns out that they can move the robot with their imagination. As long as we have our imagination. And Sakata uses this opportunity to transform the Buddha. The Buddha then spins the kaiju around and tosses his candy ass. Super Electro Wave Spin! Yells Sakata. Unfortunately, the kaiju disappears before getting hit and starts to seize the advantage. The robot can use the powers of anyone riding inside of it, so Ira and Momo use their combined strength to power bomb the kaiju. Yes, watch this! Afterwards, the kaiju shrinks dramatically. Momo then visualizes the house again as it transforms back to normal. Okurun inspects the kaiju and surprisingly finds a person inside. Gah! Okurun, are you okay? Who do you think you are, intruder? Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Angered by what happened, Momo storms off. Okurun then decides they need to figure out a method in which they can communicate with the girl. Peeny Weenie puts a translator on the girl. As she reveals that her name is Vimola. You and I will be married, says Vimola. Elsewhere, we see a mysterious alien attacking the Serpo men. Your things are my things, and my things are my things. At the dinner table, Momo reveals that Vimola was finding a way to find a husband. Okarun acts nicely towards Vimola as Momo glares at him with evil intentions. <laughs> Though she's acting nice now, Momo reminds Okarun that she could still be their enemy. Outside, Gigi tries on the kaiju suit. Inside the kaiju suit, Gigi sees an image of an alien that we saw earlier fighting the Serpo men. Psycho instructs Momo to take Vimola to school with her. Vimola uses the power of her suit to transform it into the same clothing as Momo's. On their way to school, Vimola shows Momo the golden glowing ball in her suit. Because they're late for school, Momo decides to take a shortcut through the forbidden area. They begin to make their way through the wreckage, encountering a strange creature with a mirror in her hand. Am I pretty? And so pretty that I hardly can believe I'm real. La 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 la. Pomade? Pomade? The unknown woman then smashes Momo into a nearby building. And with that guys, that officially ends chapter 74 of Don to Don. Now this is a manga that was released in 2021 and has been releasing on a weekly schedule. So if you catch up with the video, you can start reading the chapters on a weekly schedule. You get a nice little pace there. And of course, as more chapters comes out, I'll add to this video as well. If you guys like the video, please subscribe. I've made other manga timelines, so go check those out if you're interested. But until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.